This is a microscopic view of germs magnified several million times. When germs attack the human body, they often cause serious and dangerous diseases, such as diphtheria, a vicious disease of children. Germs in unknown trillions upon trillions infest the earth. They cripple and maim and destroy human life. To combat these germs and to protect public health, Modern medical practice enlists the aid of vaccines, serums, medicines, and drugs. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. A placebo may look like real medicine, but it isn't. Placebos are made of inert substances like sugar and used in clinical drug trials to prove the efficacy of a real drug. In clinical trials, one group of patients receives an experimental medicine and a second group receives a placebo. In theory, this gives scientists an objective way to measure whether a medicine actually has an effect on a patient. These double-blind, placebo-controlled tests are used throughout the pharmaceutical industry, and a drug must beat a placebo in at least two trials to gain FDA approval. Seems simple, except, that is, for the placebo effect. Some patients who take the fake medicine also experience improvement in their symptoms. Sometimes, placebos even outperform real treatments. While scientists don't fully understand what causes the placebo effect, we do know one thing. It may be increasing. Here's where it gets crazy. It's strange to think that a person's beliefs may generate measurable effects. It's even weirder to think that this effect may be increasing across the board. FDA drug testing requires three phases of trials, and by the second phase, these drugs are tested against placebos. Approximately half of all the drugs that fail in late-stage trials fail because they simply can't outperform placebos. So what exactly makes a placebo generate some of the same effects as real medicine? A number of factors can influence the effectiveness of a placebo, including a pill's color or the location of the testing facility. For example, when Valium is tested in France, it outperforms the placebo. But when it is tested in the United States, Valium tends to fail the placebo test. Placebo research has been conducted across the world, and the findings have challenged some of the industry's most basic assumptions. The data on antidepressant drugs can be particularly disturbing. Since the 1980s, two large-scale analyses of antidepressant trials have shown a significant increase in the placebo effect. According to drug makers, it's not that the old meds are getting weaker. It's more like the placebo effect itself is increasing. Physicians are intimately familiar with placebos. In a survey by the National Institutes of Health, half of the physicians surveyed admitted that they've treated patients with placebos. The implications of the placebo effect are wide-reaching. Most immediately, it highlights how much we still have to learn about the relationship between a patient's mind and body. And there's still the possibility that an unknown variable could generate this perceived rise in effectiveness. There's also no question that the placebo effect could spell trouble for drug makers. This apparent growth in the placebo effect could undermine the FDA's testing procedures, and it could also mean that some drugs currently on the market, if retested in different locations, might fail to outperform fake medicine. Some researchers are attempting to compile data from drug companies to measure the placebo effect, yet these companies are highly secretive about drug testing data. Whether this is simply due to good business practices or a fear of what the studies may find, it's clear there's something the drug companies don't want you to know. Registered pharmacists are in constant demand, not only in the manufacture of pharmaceutical products, but also as salesmen and detail men to visit physicians and druggists and to give technical advice on the latest developments in medicines and drugs. Thank <laughs> you.